In this video, I'll describe how to measure the energy efficiency of the fuel cell in activity number 5. Start by connecting the alligator clips of the power supply to the electrolyzer. Connect red to red and black to black. Then go ahead and plug in the power supply into an electrical outlet. Make sure that the power strip or any source of power is far enough away from the electrolyzer in case any of the potassium hydroxide were to spill out. Run the electrolyzer with both of the valves in the open position so that you purge out any excess air that's either in the storage columns or in the gas supply tubes. This will take about one minute. After about one minute or so, go ahead and close both valves on the gas supply tubes and let the electrolyzer run until the hydrogen storage column is nearly full. When the hydrogen storage column is nearly full, go ahead and unplug the power supply and monitor the level of gases in the storage columns for about one minute. If the level of gas decreases, then there is a leak in the electrolyzer somewhere. If there are no leaks in the system, we can go ahead and connect the fuel cell to the electrolyzer. Start by taking these short purge valves and connecting them to the bottom ports on both sides of the fuel cell. You also want to make sure that both of these valves are in the closed position. Next, take the hydrogen gas supply tube and connect it to the top port of the fuel cell on the side that's labeled hydrogen. All these connections should be fairly snug. Next, take the oxygen gas supply tube and connect it to the side of the fuel cell labeled oxygen. Once all four tubes are connected to the fuel cell, go ahead and insert it into the white plastic tray to keep it snug. Go ahead and connect the electric motor to the fuel cell by connecting red to red and black to black. Open the valves on the gas supply tubes to the fuel cell. Then give the purge valves a quick half turn. If the electric motor is running properly, and it looks like it is, go ahead and disconnect it from the fuel cell. At this point, you will need two multimeters, one to measure voltage across the fuel cell and one to measure current through the fuel cell. Here's an illustration showing how to connect both multimeters to the circuit. Right before you reconnect the wires to power the electric motor, you'll need to record the initial volume of hydrogen gas in student sheet 5.1. Okay, go ahead and reconnect the wires to power the electric motor. And then record the voltage and current measurements while you let the motor run for exactly 60 seconds. Now, if you notice that the voltage and current measurements change significantly during the 60 second trial, you will need to purge the fuel cell and then rerun the 60 second trial. After 60 seconds, go ahead and disconnect the electric motor and immediately record the final volume of hydrogen gas in student sheet 5.1. Now repeat this procedure one or two more times to make sure you are getting consistent results. If necessary, run it a third time. If the amount of gas in the electrolyzer runs low, you'll need to reconnect the power supply to the electrolyzer to generate more hydrogen and oxygen gas. For more information about the curriculum, please visit CPUP's website or LabAIDS, our publisher, at the following addresses.